Hi, Kevin from The Math Source here, and in this video I'm going to go through questions 2, 7, 12, 17 and 22 of the Junior Maths Challenge from 2020. Just before we get started, let me tell you about a course that I've made to help you prepare for the Junior Maths Challenge, links in the description below. This is a totally free course, and in it I'm going to walk you through 20 problems that I've designed specifically for this course. They're challenging problems that will help you prepare for maths challenges and really just help you enjoy maths beyond the sorts of things you're doing at school. For each question, you'll first see the question on the screen, so you can have a go at it and try to work out the answer. Then, if you're stuck or you want to think of different ways of solving the problem, you can watch my video Hint, and then you can have another go at solving the problem. Once you think you've got the answer, you can choose the answer from a selection of multiple choice options on the screen. It'll tell you whether you're right or wrong. Then you can either have another go at the question if you got it wrong, or watch my video Solution uh, if you are really stuck, or if you want to see if there's another way of solving the problem apart from the way that you did it. And it really is a totally free course, so I really hope you'll sign up below and work through these problems with me. Let me show you the solutions to questions 2, 7, 12, 17 and 22 of the Junior Maths Challenge from 2020. So here we've just got to work out 2020 divided by 20. I think I'd think of it like this. I would just think, well, I know that 20 times 100 is 2000. So 20 times 101 would be 2020. So I'm not actually doing the division here. And I can do that super quickly in my head and realize that that means the answer is 101. But of course, if you prefer, you could also just write it out like a long division uh, like this and you'll get uh, 1, 0, and then you'll carry a 2 here, and you'll get 1, and you'll see the answer is 101 that way as well. Four different positive integers have a product of 110. What's the sum of the four integers? The prime numbers are often referred to as the building blocks of arithmetic, the building blocks of numbers. It's because they really represent like the DNA of a number. So in a question like this, working out the factorization of 110 is really key. A lot of people do this with like a uh, tree diagram here or something. So I've got 110. I could split that as 11 and 10. And then 10 I can split as 2 and 5 until I get down to prime numbers. So I know that 110 is equal to 2 times 5 times 11. Now it says that it's four different positive integers that have this product. Um, but there's only three possible factors here. And if I start combining them, like 2 times 55, I'm going to have even less. So the other number we have to remember we can add in here is 1. So I could also write this as 110 is 1 times 2 times 5 times 11. Now I can't use 1 more than once, right? So I can't do something like 1 times 1 times 10 times 11 here, because then they wouldn't be different positive integers. So this is the only way we can do it. The numbers must be 1, 2, 5, and 11. And 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 11 is 19. And so the answer is A, 19. In question 12, we've got an equilateral triangle divided into four smaller equilateral triangles. Uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, here. What fraction of the area of the large triangle has been shaded? Well, um, so you could say, okay, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, triangles here. If you think about each of these, you can sort of break them down uh, into uh, very small triangles. And each of the sort of middle-sized triangles here has four of the smaller ones and there's four of them. So there's 16 of these small triangles in total, three of which are shaded. So the answer is that the shaded area is three out of 16, and the answer is B, three sixteenths. You could also just look at the middle triangle and say, well, it's three quarters of the middle triangle, and the, and the middle triangle is a quarter of the large triangle, so it's three quarters times a quarter, or three quarters divided by four, which again gets us to three sixteenths. The next question, we've got this rectangle uh, that's dissected into nine different size squares as shown in the diagram. And so really what we've got to do here is work out which length is which. And uh, it's not too bad here, right? So clearly the smallest one here is the is the one, the shade of one in the middle, right? And the next biggest one, four, uh, is this one. This will be four by four. And then uh, the one that's the uh, next biggest here is going to be seven. So uh, this one looks like it's the next biggest, doesn't it? And then if I, the next one is eight, and you can sort of see, well, okay, if I do seven along the bottom here, plus one, that gives me, uh, gives me eight. So this one is eight. And again, eight plus one gives me nine. So that one's definitely nine. And then nine plus one is 10. So that one's 10. And then 10 plus four is 14. And then 14 plus four is 18. And then this last one must be 15. And that's 
7 plus 8, which is 15, okay? Now, if I look at, I want to work at the area of the rectangle, and if we look along the, the, the uh, sides, so this distance here is 18 plus 15, that's 33, and you can double check that that's the same as 14 plus 10 plus 9, going down uh, the other side if you want to, uh, and along the top, 14 plus 18 is 32, and you can check that's the same as 15 plus 8 plus 9 if you want to be sure. So we've just got to work out 32 times uh, 33 here. You can do that as a long uh, multiplication if you want to. Um, I happen to know that 32 times 32 is 1024 quite easily, and I know that because I know my powers of 2, and that's really useful to know, right? So 32 is 2 to the power of 5, and if I do 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 5, I get 2 to the power of 10, which is 1024. So it's a good sequence to know. Um, and we actually want 32 times 33, so that's going to be uh, another 32 on top of this, so that's 1056. But you know, do the multiplication however you want, obviously. Uh, either way, the answer is E, 1056. Harriet has a square piece of paper. She folds it in half to form a rectangle, and then in half again to form a second rectangle, which is not a square. Um, it says the perimeter of the second rectangle is 30. What's the area of the original square? Okay, so um, this thing about the uh, it not being a square is really important here, right? So imagine you fold this square in half, uh, and then you know it would look. It would just I just have the the bottom half here. Now if I fold if I if I fold it in half again along this line. I end up with a square, so that's not how we're meant to fold it. We're meant to fold it again in like this line here. So what I'm left with is just this bottom part here. Okay, so that means that uh, you can see that whatever the side length of the square is, the side of the rectangle we end up with here is a quarter of it, right? Because it's, um, you know, this would, you know, if that's the full side length, that would be a half, you know, that would be a half, um, half here, and then that would be a quarter of it. Now. Rather than doing x and a quarter x here, it's easier to do x and 4x. So if you want a quarter of something, make the something is a quarter of 4x. Um, and then you can see the perimeter of the rectangle we're left with here is 4x plus 4x plus x plus x, which is 10x. So 10x is equal to 30. That means uh, x equals 3. So 4x is equal to 12. And this square is a 12 by 12 square then. Uh, so the area of the original square is 12 times 12 which is 144. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget that the best way to prepare would be to click the link below and to sign up for my totally free online course.